So no Mocktober would be complete with one of the top mocktail brands, Thoroughgood. So we're going to dissect this and put it on two of the series that we're doing, the Mocktober series and the Matusa series, because these are made in the United States and they're mocktails, so we'll rank them on both. And I love Thoroughgoods, and they came out with this new model that has this little stitch on the back. It's true to the original, and I've always been curious if it's built to the same quality that built the Thoroughgood workwear brand in the, the normal mock toe, or if it's any different in any way because it does have a slightly different profile. So we're going to cut it in half, dissect it, run it through all the tests to really see how this stacks up against the competition, and see what Thoroughgood can make for a heritage-inspired modern work boot that's still built in a heritage way, if that, if that made any sense. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you try new designer fragrances for just $17 a month. And it's a great service if you wanna learn more about fragrances without gambling on an entire bottle and wasting more than $17 on a giant bottle you might not end up using. And it's super flexible because you can skip any month you want without any penalties. And each of these fragrances that you receive lasts about 30 days and you can upgrade your plan to include two to three products per month which is really nice because for me I here's the thing so I don't I didn't I couldn't afford like nice colognes for the longest time up until like the last couple of years if I'm being honest and so having this be an option to, to not only try a bunch of different things to find exactly what you like, but also to have a, a variety of really nice name brand fragrances is pretty cool. The ones that they sent me, and just, just so you know how little I know about fragrances, I had to have Sam do the phonetic spelling of all these because I wasn't 100% confident in my ability to, to pronounce all these names. So we got the Burberry Brit. We have the Michael Germain Sexual Noir. The Prada Luna Rosa. We have the Dolce & Gabbana, the one for men, and the Versace Porome. Hopefully that was somewhat accurate, but, but that's the beauty of this, is that if you know nothing about cologne, this is the perfect opportunity to learn and try several different things without breaking the bank. And more importantly, make sure you click the link in my description, use the code ROSEANVIL, so you get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That boils down to about $8 for your very first month. So check them out below, and thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. So to give you the quick history of the long history of Thoroughgood, it all started in 1892, it says on the box, in, when Albert Weinbrand opened a cobblery in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And he started this legacy to create footwear for every type of American. And by 1900, he purchased a local shoe manufacturer to, to produce his own line of shoes. Then 15 years later, he grew that company to be producing 8,000 pairs per day, which is pretty crazy. And he was, a, he was a man ahead of his time because in those early teens of the 19th century, people were working super long hours. It's like industrial revolution. Everyone was working in a factory and he cut hours from 10 hours a day to nine hours a day. So, and without, in, without decreasing the pay, which I thought was really cool. And then by 1917, the wor World War I had started and became a major contributor to fitting a lot of the US soldiers. Then in 1918, Thoroughgood introduced a line of boots that was specifically designed for miners, oil workers, rail workers, and soldiers for World War I. And then in 1938, they started making safety footwear. And then soon after that, World War II started and they started converting all their manufacturing power to making boots for World War II. And then by 1943, they made the very first steel-toed work boot. And then also in 1943, the employees of the Weinbrenner unionized, and they're still unionized today, I believe. I think it even says on the tag. And then another important milestone was 1964. They, they released the official Boy Scout boot, the hike and camp. And then in 2000, workers took ownership of the company in the form of an employee stock ownership plan, the ES, ESOP. And then in 2001, they donated 500 pairs of work boots to the Ground Zero uh, workers after the 9-11 attacks. And then from 2001 to 2022, they hit that sweet spot of the heritage goods coming back by making a heritage looking boot that performs like a work boot, that's comfortable like a work boot. And they've really built a name for themselves in this uh, this current trend of uh, work wear that people wear casually. So a very long history and a pretty uh, um, unique history of with the union and how it all was established and how it's still union ran today. So now I'll start dissecting this boot and to give you an idea of what this boot actually is. So this is different from the regular Thoroughgood boot that most people uh, consider a thorough good boot with the mock toe and the, the, the like the 
orangey colored leather. This is their 1957 series. So what they've done is they've, they've taken the old patterns from some of their vintage boots and revived it to make a different looking boot. I don't really, honestly, I don't really know if it's different on the inside, but as you can see, you've got this little stitch on the back that's like a mock toe stitch for your heel. And we did a lot of research and we cannot figure out what that's for. The best guess that we've seen is that it, it adds a little spot for you to pry your boots off like you do at the end of the day without damaging your boots by prying it at the welt. And then, you know, you got some different contours and a little different shape of different things. I really like the look of this boot. I think I like this more than the regular mock toes by Thoroughgood. You know, the toe is a little bit different shape, it seems like, and and there's some other features on the inside there that make it different. So let's start going through the details, starting with the leather first, because that's my expertise. And this this leather is a unique leather, and it's, some, it's up there with some of my favorite work leather because it's a chrome tanned leather that has tons of oils infused into the leather. So it's really soft and supple. It almost has like a cold, clammy feel to it because of how much oil's worked into it. And it's a really thick leather. It's, it's up in that 2.5 thickness, 2.5 millimeter thickness, which is like, at right at that sweet spot for work wear. You know, two millimeters is a little bit on the thin side. Three millimeters is getting you up in that Pacific Northwest range where it's really hard to break in. And 2.5 can be really hard to break in, but this leather is tumbled. See all this natural rolling and folding and like diff different uh, pebbling on this leather? This leather is softened artificially, artificially, whatever, before it's put on the boot. So they basically take a stiff, full hide of leather that's been oil tanned and all that, and then they just tumble it in a big tumbler to give it this texture that softens it up and basically making the leather more malleable without damaging the leather. And there's an argument out there that people say that tumbled leather is not as durable as a stiffer, more firm leather, and it's really hard to really know but we've cut apart a worn out pair of Thoroughgoods and the leather was in pretty good condition, especially if you keep it oiled and you keep you take care of it and not let all that dirt and grime build up that slowly like micro abrasions your, your leather apart. This leather is a really great work leather. So to grade this leather, we put the macro lens on the cross section just to make sure it had a grain. And you can see it's a big, nice chunk of grain on there. And we burned the leather to make sure it doesn't have a plastic coating on top and there's no sign of a plastic coat. And you can tell that it doesn't have a fake print embossed into it because of how much the, the texture varies from side to side and panel to panel on this boot. Because you can see on the toe where they stretched it around the last is really tight and has a really defined pore structure versus the more loose shaft of the boot that wasn't pulled around the last and, and tacked tight has a really loose pebbled tumbled texture. I'm surprised at how thick they keep this leather. It's a, you know, some spots on this boot are like three millimeters thick and it's, I don't think it's any different than the regular boots, but it's a, I like this leather a lot. And so if I were to grade this leather, I would say this is pretty easily an A grade leather and it'll age really nicely. You know, it's, it has a fairly heavy pigment on top, but because the leather is dyed through the core, you're not gonna notice much of a difference if you, if you get that stain or pigment scratched away. And we also did the puncture test on it just to see how strong this was against punctures. Here's your chart, not a graph. People got mad at me for calling it a graph. I didn't know it was gonna be a chart until we, we made the video. But here's your chart of the different punctures. And we put this one on the Arbor Press and it took 51 pounds to puncture through, including the, the lining and everything. So tumbled leather seems to be not quite as puncture resistant as some of the firmer leathers, which makes sense. It's a little more pliable, more malleable. So, you know, and these tests are mostly just for fun and to put some data to this leather because, you know, we're trying to get better testing equipment, but it costs tens of thousands of dollars. So we're working on it. And then if we move to the inside of the boot, unlike the regular Thorough Goods, this one is lined. You know, the regular Thorough Goods have that, just a, the plain leather upper and a little bit of a trill, I think it's called trill, drill lining in the vamp that sometimes wears out and is even worn out before you get the boot because of the lasting process. Well, this boot has a waterproof membrane and this moisture wicking lining that goes throughout the entire boot, as far as I can tell. And so part of the appeal of this 1947 line is that you do get a little bit of water protection and you get that moisture wicking lining compared to the, the regular leather. And it does have a fairly high gusseted tongue. It goes all the way up to the second to the top uh, speed hook. And so we wanted to test to make sure these are actually waterproof. So we put it on our waterproof test, dunked them in the water, let them sit for five minutes. And surprisingly, one of them leaked, like a fair amount leaked. And I don't know where it leaked because the way this is structured is that the waterproof lining isn't this fabric you see. It's like a really, really thin plastic layer, basically. It's like a plastic bag around your foot. And it's usually seam sealed with like some seam tape and it's usually, um, really, really thin, and sometimes when they make a boot, they'll puncture a hole in it. So 
one boot was fine, the other one was not waterproof. And so that's kind of a bummer. I thought that they would be waterproof. So if you get a pair of these, I'm not saying dunk your, your shoes in water, but just pay attention to them because if they're not waterproof and you're expecting to be waterproof, you, you might want to call up Thoroughgood and get a replacement. And just linings generally, I don't usually like linings. It just seems like it gives you more things to wear out, makes them less breathable. You can get that waterproofness from it, but as you can see from this test, it just, it, from day one, it can fail. And so a lot of times if I'm looking for a waterproof, if a true waterproof boot, I just get like a rubber boot. Or if I want one of my non-waterproof boots to be waterproof, I just wax it and put a ton of, of mean coil on it and just make that leather impermeable because of the oil content. And another thing that I don't love about this boot is there is not a dedicated internal counter cover. So right at the heel is where you, most people, that's usually the first fail spot for a boot. And usually they'll put a, a, way, a layer of suede against there because leather's gonna wear out a lot slower than fabric. This one does not. And so that's gonna be a fell spot. And that's an issue for the waterproofness as well because if you wear through that lining and then wear through the membrane, your, your waterproof's gone, waterproofness is gone anyway. So uh, not the greatest lining. I wish they'd come out with a boot that was unlined because I really like this boot. And then if we pull out the insole, so this is the insole that everyone really likes with Thoroughgood. They have really nice insoles. It's got this like, mem not memory foam, it's like a gel pad on the heel and the toe and then the, the actual foam itself is like a pour on filling foam. And the nice thing is it's replaceable and you can buy these separately. So if you wear through them, they're easy to replace. Then underneath is just more of the lining. And if we start moving through the sole construction, so you can see the midsole right here is a rubber midsole. It's a 360 Goodyear welt construction as far as we can tell. And one flaw that keep showing up with Thoroughgoods is they their welt is not leather. It's a synthetic welt. And the problem with that is leather is one of the most durable uh, materials out there for lots of flexing back and forth and water and heat and, and drying it out because the way that leather is structured is just millions of little uh, fibers interlaced. So as you're wearing those, the fibers usually stay pretty tight and eventually they kind of separate and will eventually crack, but not nearly as fast as a synthetic welt, wear, welt will because it's like a plastic essentially and there's no fibers holding it together. And it's just like um, metal, if you heat it up or if you like flex it a bunch of times, usually it, it'll work harden and break. Similar concept with this welt. Is it gonna break the first few times you wear it? Not even close, like in, and even if it does split, you can still wear the boots uh, for a significantly longer time than you might expect. The problem is it makes it harder to resole because with a broken welt and it being a plastic welt, when that cobbler comes in here and wants to re and resew something on, it's just gonna split the welt more and they're, then they're gonna have to take the welt off and sew a new one on and for a, a, a $300 boot, it's usually not worth the money to pay a cobbler to throw a new welt on there. And the nice thing about this boot is though that the outsole is glued on and not sewn on. So even if you do split your welt, you can still take it to a cobbler and all they're gonna do is peel off your old outsole and glue a new one on. So it's it's a little bit nitpicky that it's 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 a synthetic welt, but it is something that I that, that weighs on me when I'm trying to consider buying a pair of these or when I recommend these. And speaking of the outsole, this is one thing that Thoroughgood is really well known for and it's their, their Maxwear wedge outsole. And this is made in the United States and it is a polyurethane based outsole. So a lot of the other wedges out there are a rubber based outsole, which give you a lot of traction, give you a good amount of squish, and uh, but the only problem is they wear out really quick. Well, this outsole is, is attempting to solve that problem by making a polyurethane that's more abrasion resistant, or is this <laughs> abrasion resistant, but still gives you a lot of squish. And from everything that I've heard from people that have worn the different wedges is that these really do last a long time. They say they're not quite as soft and they're not quite as grippy, but they last significantly longer. And that's the beautiful thing about a wedge sole is you get that squish, you get that comfort, and most of these wedge sole boots are built to be easily resold. So you can take this to a cobbler and for like, I don't know, 50 bucks, I'll throw a new outsole on for you. And if we put the durometer tester on there, if we do the sidewall first, 50 shore A, because you know, obviously the sidewall doesn't have that harder shell on it like the bottom does. So the actual foam itself is around 50 shore A. On the bottom, 
we're up towards a 70 Shore A. So not quite as soft as like the ACG Nike's wedge, but not quite as hard as a regular work sole wedge because of how soft the inner foam is on the inside of the wedge. And then we also just for fun want to do the puncture test on the outsole. So we put it on our little rig and punctured through and it took 115 pounds to pierce through, which is somewhat of a relevant data point for people that work in these because some people want to know how puncture resistant their outsole and their whole sole construction is. And so if you're planning on stepping on any nails, this wedge sole clearly isn't quite as puncture resistant as some of the other outsoles out there. So keep that in mind. And as far as I know, there's not a lot of leather in the in, on the inside of the boot that's going to help prevent puncture resistance. So even though that test is a little bit more just for fun than anything, it is relevant when it comes to workwear. And then other than that, that's kind of the gist of this, the outside of this boot. You know, we didn't really talk about the mock toe. If you haven't seen the everything you need to know about mock toe boots video on the Rose Anvil 2 channel, it's more of a long format, me rambling, and just kind of talking through things for about 30 minutes. I go through every type of mock toe there is and the pros and cons and everything you need to know. But this is a one piece mock toe where the vamp is a single piece like a regular boot. And then they sew a rib around the toe to give it that mock toe look. And one interesting thing about what Thoroughgood does is they perforate that stitch line. And I think that's to help prevent it from splitting and cracking to give it a little bit of a relief, kind of like what you do on, like when you're cutting a board or that's the only thing I can think of actually that's relevant. And I'm really curious what's on the inside of these because I have no idea how they're built compared to the regular thorough goods. So now let's cut these in half and see how it stacks up against the competition on the Matusa board and the Mocktober board and see what else is on the inside. So let's cut them in half. All right, we got it cut in half, so let's see what's inside. So surprisingly different on the inside than the original Thorough Goods. So the first thing I noticed was that the, obviously the counter cover is not there. And Thorough Goods, they actually have a pretty good counter cover. You know, it's a fairly thick piece of leather that's backed by that cellulose counter that gives the heel its structure. But on these, you've got that lining, which makes sense because you can't really sew through the lining and keep it waterproof. But I just don't like that that's a potential fail spot on a boot. And it's it's kind of a necessary evil for this waterproof version. Yeah, so there, there is a fiberglass shank in there. We just missed it with the bandsaw. But it seems like everything else is fairly similar. You know, we've got that rubber slip sole. We've got the cork filling. You've got a, a synthetic lasting board. It's not a fiber board like in the regular throw goods. It's more of a like a cellulose board. And now you can really see what I was talking about with that waterproof membrane. So all it is that's keeping that water out is that really thin like lining right here. Not this fabric, but the, the material that backs it. Now you can see that seam seal tape. So all it takes is one little puncture somewhere in this lining or one little wear spot that you've worn it too many times over and over and over and it just wears through that little layer of, of material and all your all of a sudden your boots are no longer waterproof. And as for the mock toe, you can see now for sure that it's that single piece mock toe. And I'm curious if there's anything on the inside that gives it it's a little bit more structure. So I'm just gonna cut this apart a little bit. Looks like there's nothing in there. So it's just the leather itself giving it that structure. Another thing that the 1957 does not have compared to the regular Thorough Goods is it doesn't have that pour on layer underneath your foot. And that's part of what makes Thorough Goods so unique and so special because it really blends the heritage work 
goods like a uh, red wing and some of these like really heavy leather sold and like the Knicks and why it's all these really heavy boots with the really light boots that are usually foam based because it combines the traditional construction technique of a Goodyear welt with the several layers and the cork and all that that gives give you that custom footprint but they make them slightly more comfortable and easier to break in by using these synthetic materials and by using a really soft wedge outsole. So now to the question of are the Thoroughgoods 1957s worth it? They are made in the United States. They're made of high quality leather. They're traditional construction. They're missing a lot of the leather components that we've seen in boots similar to this price similar in this price range um, so I think and they, they've reached they've raised their price recently over the last couple of years so 290 almost 300 bucks is, is quite a lot of money and I think I think they are worth it if you're if you're wanting a comfortable good-looking mock toe I think they're worth it so I'd say they're worth it nine times out of ten and as for how this ranks the most important part of the video how does this rank on the matusa board and how does it rank on the mocktober board so remember with the matusa and the mocktober board we're not looking at value so you know obviously some of these cheaper boots are not going to rank as high as some of the other boots because we're ranking it solely on materials and construction and the quality of the boot regardless of the price for the mocktober board i'm going to put the thoroughgoods 1957s right between Alden and right between Kingman. So right there in between because the Alden still have more leather and more high quality materials than the Thoroughgoods in my opinion. And obviously they're significantly better than the Nike uh, Kingmans. And then as for Matusa, this one's a little bit a little bit different because we got more on the board for Matusa. So right now on the board we have the Thursday, we have the Wolverines and the Origins. And comparing it against those three, I think it's a pretty safe statement and honest statement to say this is below all those boots and I put it at the very bottom. Which, keep in mind, it doesn't mean that they're a bad boot. It just, in quality, strict quality wise, it doesn't quite match the other boots in a similar price range. And it's priced basically the exact same as the Thursdays and the Origins. And those have a little bit better quality materials, but I still think on the work site, your Thoroughgoods are gonna outlast probably both of those boots. And so, you know, these, these rankings are, are mostly for fun based on solely the materials. So keep that in mind. So let me know what you think of this video and what your experience has been in the thorough good regulars versus the 1957. And let me know if you agree or disagree with my ranking so far, because that's, that's one of the fun aspects of these boots is that everyone has a slightly different opinion. And I'd be curious what you guys think. And the new Mocktober shirts, Oh, wrong side will be coming out pretty soon well, here's a little teaser to show you what we got in the works the pre-order should be probably next week and thank you guys so much for supporting the channel my small leather goods business the mocktober series the matusa series the cowboy boot series this has been by far the most fun fall that we've ever had so i appreciate all your guys support and allowing us to spend the money on these boots and shoes to cut them in half to show you what you're spending your hard-earned money on so that you don't have to waste your money on guessing what's inside of the boots and how long they're going to last and the quality of them so thank you guys see ya